Let's talk about the configuration basics needed for LeafOS connections to Microsoft Azure Virtual Desktop. We will go over the following topics. Network setup and activation of LeafOS. General configuration and audio check. Connecting to ABD including VPN setup. Local applications and guest mode. Collecting the troubleshooting file. And repurposing the PC with direct installation of LeafOS. To begin with, you'll need a USB thumb drive with a copy of LeafOS. This software can be downloaded from ncomputing.com. I've set the BIOS on my device to boot from the USB drive and started the process. Once LeafOS is booted, we need to connect to the internet. You can see your internet status here in the left, configure Wi-Fi or Ethernet connections as needed. For Wi-Fi, select a network and enter your credentials. For Ethernet, enable that interface and configure as needed. Save the changes and you're ready to go. To activate the LeafOS trial or a full license, enter your 16-digit alphanumeric license key. Once entered and accepted, this license will be tied to this specific computing device. We're going to start in default operation mode. In this case, it's Microsoft Azure Virtual Desktop. I'm going to enter credentials to log into the system. In some cases, your company may require you to log into the VPN private network first. Go to Settings, Network, VPN. We support a variety of popular VPN protocols. Each protocol has its own set of configuration options. For this demo, I'll be using OpenVPN. I'm enabling the user to provide the VPN username and password, but presetting the VPN server address, and I'll click Save. Now when we boot up, you'll see the VPN login screen comes up first. Let's go through the basic configurations available for LeafOS. We'll do this locally, but keep in mind that these can also be changed remotely using the PMC Endpoint Management software. If you look under the General Entry, you'll see different operation modes supported by LeafOS. Under Display, the default is to automatically detect a connected monitor and resolution. A screensaver is available. You can specify the duration of inactivity required to trigger the screensaver and what action should be taken. Either turn off the screen or turn off the screen and disconnect the session. You can customize the wallpaper by specifying an image URL. Click Add and it will update immediately. For USB peripheral support, the default setting is optimum. We support a wide range of peripheral devices including mass storage, audio, printer, webcam, smart card readers, and more. Under Keyboard, you'll find the default setup is US. However, you can specify other international keyboard layouts. Under Management, Remote Device Management is set to automatically discover PMC. You can also specify a PMC address. Under Date and Time, the configuration is set for automatic discovery. Time will be kept accurate using NTP servers. Under About, you'll find important information about your device, including the serial number, firmware version, registration status, and network settings. Let's return to the general screen. The settings menu itself can be password protected under device protection. This will prevent unauthorized modifications to the device settings. Once set, any attempt to enter the settings menu will require authentication. LeafOS will try to automatically detect audio inputs and outputs, and the currently enabled devices are shown in the top bar. You can change devices and settings by clicking the top of the screen and configuring as needed. Here you can change the source, adjust the volume and balance, and perform audio tests. 
settings for both input and output are available here. It's quite simple to configure LeafOS to access Microsoft AVD. Click on the Settings menu. Under General, select the AVD client. Under Connections, select the AVD releases you want to access. You can select multiple here. You also have the option to enable local applications. More on that later. Click Apply to save the settings. Now let's log in to Microsoft AVD. Once authenticated, you will see the resources available to you. In this case, we have applications and a Windows 10 desktop. Let's launch the remote desktop. We are now in full screen mode of this Windows 10 instance running in the cloud. If you hover your mouse at the top, you'll see the option to window the desktop. In this mode, you can minimize, resize, or move it around. Let's enable local application support. First, go to Settings and verify that AVD is selected. Now go under Connections and click to enable local applications. You'll notice a Local Applications tab has appeared to the left. There are three apps available, Chromium Browser, Microsoft Teams, and Zoom. Each one has its own settings tab. Local applications can give you better performance than the same application when accessed through a virtual desktop. These applications can be enabled individually. By default, the user's login information will persist, making login easier after the initial setup. Alternatively, guest mode can be turned on where all personal information is purged when exiting the application or virtual session. Now that the applications are configured, let's apply the settings and log into our AVD connection. Under our resources list, we now have local applications. Let's select that and scroll down to the three applications we just made available. These are native Linux applications running on LeafOS. Because they are running locally, their performance is excellent. Here I'm running Zoom. I can participate in web conferencing natively on the device. This helps solve the audio and video challenges common to virtualization. Here's an example of the browser. I can set my presets, add bookmarks. Scrolling is very smooth. Again, this is running locally on the device and not through the virtualized session. Let me also launch a remote desktop in AVD. I can minimize the desktop and launch the local applications from the taskbar at the bottom. I'm able to run these side by side, getting the best of local and virtualized applications and desktops together at the same time. I'm now going to sign off from the Windows 10 desktop and bring up all resources again. 
uh, log off Windows 10 here. This will end all the active remote app and desktop connections. It saves the user settings upon exit, so next time I log into the local apps, they will retain their credentials. As mentioned earlier, LeafOS local applications can be run in guest mode. This means that when the local application is run, any cache files, cookies, passwords, browsing histories are all temporarily stored in the system RAM. Upon exiting the local application, everything will be wiped clean and be ready for the next user. To modify your local applications to run in the guest mode, go to the settings menu and then click on connections. Enable local application and then enable the guest mode from each application tab. I have enabled guest mode in all three applications, so let's run them. First, I'll authenticate into the ABD session. Let me launch a browser, and in this case, I get the default home page, but all the profiles are empty. When I launch Teams, I get a fresh session, prompting for credentials. The same thing occurs with Zoom. Anything I do during the session will be cached temporarily in the system. When the ABD session is logged out, everything will be removed, making it an ideal setup for a public kiosk. If you run into trouble while using LeafOS and need support, our team may ask you to provide the LeafOS device troubleshooting file. Make sure you have a USB drive connected to the LeafOS device. To capture the troubleshooting file, go to the settings menu and then click on support. Now click on collect logs. In the pop-up window, choose your USB drive and click collect. The system will generate the troubleshooting file and save it to your USB drive. Provide that file to your end computing support representative when asked. These troubleshooting files can also be generated remotely by your admin using PMC. If you have PCs running Windows that you no longer want to manage, one option is to repurpose them with LeafOS. This converts the device to a dedicated LeafOS endpoint. Because this will eliminate any OS and data on the device, please be sure to move or back up any important data before proceeding. The first step is to have LeafOS flashed onto a USB drive, then boot to that drive. Go to the Settings menu, then the Installation tab. Now click Install. You'll get a warning telling you this will erase all content on your internal hard drive. To proceed, click Yes. You'll get another message showing the source disk, the target disk, and the progress bar. Click proceed to start the installation. Once the installation is finished, your device is now a LeafOS dedicated endpoint, and you won't need to use the USB device to boot anymore. For more information on LeafOS and our other products and services, check out our website at endcomputing.com.